how many of you have felt alienated uh, in your lifetime because maybe you have scored, scored less uh, in a year or maybe because of your gender or background or anything or because you scored probably too well and though, therefore your cousin sidelined you. So how many of you have felt alienated in life for any reason? How did it feel? How did it feel? Awesome or awful? Awesome. Awful. All right. So here we are talking, going to talk about a community of women who were sidelined historically, alienated historically, and we are also scared of them now. Even they are scared of us now. So can we break that? Can we actually address that fear? So here I'll take you to uh, how many of you have been to Delhi? Okay, for all of you. Wow, great. So you have probably been to Jhani Chowk and Chowri Bazaar and all these areas. So if you notice, it is surrounded by walls and it's called the wall city. And everything is within the walls. Ajmeri Gate, Mori Gate, Delhi Gate, all are walls. So there was a community of women uh, called the Tawais, uh, a, a seg segment of women created by the nobles to serve them as uh, for their entertainment, for, to fulfill their sexual urges, and even for spying. So they had benefits for them. So they were placed in Chauri Bazaar, sorry, in Jharokhas. In balconies they would sit and they would be in their Mujra Mahals, fulfilling the needs of this nobility, men in nobility. So time changed, and with colonial era, this power with the nobility declined. <coughs> and therefore a displacement happened. With the decline of, of the power in men, we see, a different, we see a shift in this women's life, which is they were pushed beyond the wall and placed outside this wall city because nobody wanted to mingle them, wanted to mingle with them. Before as well, when the nobility, they used to serve the nobility, they were away from the other rest of the society at least, but at least they had patronage of the nobles, but now they were completely shifted outside the walls. So what happened then? Yeah, so displacement happened, and therefore the conflict rose, and with that, the number of women into sex trade also rose, because it became a, a criminal area, wherein many of the women, many of the girl children would be bought and sold, and a red light district came into creation. This is a pan-Indian you know, uh, incident, and it happened in all other areas across India, in Mumbai, in Lucknow, in all other places. And institutions like Tabayev declined. Yeah. So we come to post-colonial era, wherein the wealth and control of this wealth declined, but the control still stayed, and marginalization still existed. And we have 4,000 women now living all across 77 brothels in conflict with the common society, wherein we are scared of getting into their lives and they are also scared of trusting us. So I'll share an incident with you when we, are, when we first entered into the brothel. We were just asking them questions, not trying to listen to them. So they asked me, why are you asking me so many questions? Would you tell, why are you asking me about my clients? Will you tell me about your boyfriend? what you did with your boyfriend last night or what you did with your boyfriend you know in last year how is your love life why are you asking me questions like that why don't you want to you know respect my privacy so that's the question they asked me so i was we were pushed we were you know kicked out of out of 77 i think we were kicked out of 76 brothels only one brothel probably actually accepted us the way we were but then we realized the need was something else I'll come to the need. But here, while these things were happening, while 4,000 women were living in Delhi, and many others were living in outside Delhi, in Kamatipura, or in Sonagachi, many movements had happened which is related to women. And that uh, movement had addressed this issue as in three portions. One said that it's a coercion, it's a crime, and therefore no woman should be entered into it. Somebody said it's a choice. It's her body, it's her life. And somebody, even, like some laws did not even address it. Like laws, you know, the women uh, living in red light district are not considered to be women who are mothers or daughters. And therefore the laws like domestic violence and all 
hardly you know uh, address this issue yeah so while i was sharing that incident with you that we were kicked out of 76 brothels because we probably also had gone through gone with the label and fear that the woman would not accept us and we knew more than them so therefore we tried another approach which is taking them or considering them differently like us so they are just women mothers families human beings and friends can we take them take you know talk to them like that so we tried that out without considering ourselves social workers who would want to change their lives yeah so that with the, did that work or not i would say it did work slowly but did work so we have few who started coming to us and started lighting the path lighting the path and breaking that wall we had already created thousand years back uh, so we would start with a story of women six women so um, it's a group of women who uh, one of these women had come to me and said you know i would want to do something else i i actually liked what you taught the, the other day you taught me to make baskets out of paper i really liked it i would want to do it so i was very happy and i thought she wanted to do it because she wanted to earn money and i told her all right then you will man, earn money out of it that that be so awesome you would be able to leave it she said who wants money i just want to do it because i love it so therefore she started making those baskets from that she had progressed quite ahead now and she is making lots of materials which i'll show you later on uh, the pictures of the products and uh, the first money she earned she kept it on an altar she had in the room i asked her why you all you know this is not your first in income you are already earned so much money in life she said this is something i earned from what i want love, love doing so that's what was the difference she loved doing what she was doing at that time yeah so that does she uh, collected few other women and they started a journey of exploring their dreams and exploring what they liked doing and what they were told that they can't do they were always told that they are only only sex workers and they can't have any other life yeah so we have another story which is story of a boy there is a community like you know you probably have heard or not have heard of few communities which who, who promotes customary prostitution that they push their daughters and their um, sisters into prostitution and men are supposed to earn men are not supposed to earn and they are supposed to you know in uh, use that money they, their daughters and sisters are earning seems like a progressive idea but it's not believe me because the women are controlled by the men of the society men of the family they would tell them which customer to bring and which customer to go with so all this uh, while all this happened a boy actually had taken charge of his family his uh, aunt didn't want to be into the trade and she wanted to do something else he had to you know hold he had to really hold tight his position and uh, begin a discussion with his family he did and the result was definitely a successful one he could manage to get that uh, aunt out of that and his dream is alternative he wanted to do photography he doesn't want to earn money like that he doesn't feel that it's worth it yeah so here is a picture of that boy yeah so how we can how what is the step that is being taken up by these women and the children so there are few things which they are doing we started an experiment where we used to uh, ask them to enroll into voters list we thought they would probably they were probably doing it just for to have an identity card to you know uh, take for, you know to have mobile connections or other things but turned out the voters the voting the electoral uh, the uh, the vo voters voting percentage in that area increased the women who participated in voting increased because just they just needed a chance and they were not given that yeah so yeah i'll come to this okay education so here we have a group of children it's not it's if we don't call them children we call them change leaders because what they are progressing towards it's not educating themselves what they progressing towards is changing the mindset that the women living there are just merely sex workers or just merely women who would entertain clients or men they would probably have such different dreams dreams or even not they would 
Even if they are doing that kind of work, they should be respected the way they are or accepted, at least acknowledged the way they are. So that's the uh, journey that had begun and the, and the children are quite vocal about it, vocal about what their mothers do and what their mother's aspirations are. So it's a journey for both for the children and for the mothers. And we call it a journey uh, beyond fear of labels and connecting with the outside world and telling them, all right, listen, we also have dreams and we also have respectful rights to live. Yeah. So here comes this, integration. What do you think, what does integration mean? Coming together? We have a team here of confluence, coming together, not conflict. So here, the conflict had begun long back, you know, thousand years back. But can we come together? Can, this home, can these brothels be considered as homes of women? And this, can these consi women be considered as friends and human beings just? So therefore, we started with the process of celebrating uh, events with the women, making them a sister or being friends with them. And that worked out. They opened up their houses. So yes, the question I am going to ask at the end of it. Yeah. So thousand, you know, 500 years back or 600 years back when the Mughal came, when this community had started uh, building up, a wall was created when they were shifted back to GB Road, out of the wall city. Do you want to, do you wish to continue that, continue, you know, maintaining that same tradition? Do you want to address that fear we have within ourselves? Do you want to break the wall or paint the wall with them rather than being in a fear or being in a position that probably the women living there and the community living there is different from us? Believe me, they're just like you, just like me. So the question I have is, how many of would you would actually want at least to think about them? Because we all have areas like this around us. We have women like this around us. We have people like this around us. So can we actually think of stopping, crea you know, stop creating that wall which exists between human beings and human beings and not push them beyond walls and take a step forward and at least make this two hands come together and we be friends. Believe me, they also have, are in fear. But if they are taking a step forward, I think a step forward has to be taken from us as well. So how many of you are actually willing to take that step? I know it's not going to be easy because it's going to you know, affect many things. Your families would question you. You would question yourself. Your friends would question you. Oh my God, you're going to a place like that. You're thinking about that. Come on, how can you even talk about such things? I am a very pious person. I don't talk about these things. So yeah. How many of actually would want to acknowledge that people like that exist and we have alienated themselves? And we also, in that process, we actually are not addressing the elephant in the room. Yeah, so that's the question I have. And believe me, it's a very tough journey, but once that wall is broken and you actually have a human touch, it's very easy and it's very simple to walk on. Thank you so much. <laughs>